and welcome to Coffee and Crochet with Sarah. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is just about 30 minutes to put away the cares of the world and talk about yarny fun. <laughs> and we do have some yarny fun today. We're going to do an unboxing from Lion Brand. That's exciting. And we're also going to talk a little bit about some yarn questions that I've gotten quite a bit lately, but often I get them all the time. And so I wrote a list here of some questions about yarn. And so we're going to answer those questions. And then I'm also going to show you what's new this week at Posh Pooch Designs. <clears throat> I am a little scratchy today. Our weather has been totally silly. We had like 70 degree weather, then we had a snowstorm come through and dump about five inches of snow. Then the sun came out the next day and melted most of it. And guess what? Tonight and tomorrow we're having another snowstorm. <laughs> and I know it's been really silly, crazy all over the United States. Snow, rain, wind, just crazy weather. And spring is kind of like that. And so up here in Colorado, it's normal weather for me. But I know down where my uh, daughter and her family live in Oklahoma, it's not normal. <laughs> I, I grew up in Oklahoma, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I know it's not normal to have that kind of weather. And Texas, too. And they're not used to dealing with it. I mean, up here in Colorado, in the little town that I li live in, we probably have about 50 snow um, clear things. What are those things called? Snow plows. Oklahoma and Tulsa, they probably have one or two per city, I mean, or even if that. And so they're not prepared for that. And so we really need to pray and think about them and hope that they can get past this. You know there's going to be a lot of broken pipes, a lot of flooding when it melts. So remember that, okay? The other thing I wanted to point out today is, remember last week we revealed the name of the winner who won the cup? And that was Lori Wolf, right? Well, <clears throat> after the video, I went out and did a little bit of, of shopping, picking up a few things before the next snowstorm was coming through. <laughs> and I got home and there was a message from her and she said she already was able to get a mug and would love to pass, the, pass it on or pay it forward to the next person. Well, that just blessed my heart so much. And so I contacted the next person and the next person was Ruth Larrabee. And I got a notification this morning, Ruth, if you're watching, that your cup should be delivered to you today. So I thought that was really cool. You know, um, it, it really did my heart good because there's been some things going on, you know, and sometimes we, we get, get a little bit, not depressed. I wasn't depressed, but I was feeling a little down over some comments as well as some things going on with some family members. And so um, when that happened, it just lifted my spirits because that's paying it forward. Sure, Lori would have loved to have a second or third or however many cups you ordered. I mean, you can't have too many, right? But in her heart, she decided to let someone else have the cup. And I just met, it just meant so much to me. So if you're ready, let's clink in. Clinkity clink clink. I just love my mugs. Like I said, I bought three of them because I'm pretty clumsy. And one of the things that I do is when, <clears throat> when I take, I, you know, I have my two little chihuahuas. And when I take them out front to go potty, I just take my cup with me and I just carry it. And I cannot tell you how many of them I have dropped on the, on the pavement on the 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 bottom of the garage or something and broke. And so I made sure I got several. <laughs> Is that not silly? <laughs> well, I want to thank all of you for tuning in today. And um, I'm so excited when I see your names. I'm looking through here to see if if um, um, Ruth happens to be in. But she might clink in later. But it's so much fun just to scroll through and see all of the names that I recognize. And a lot of names that I don't. And just welcome everybody. And again... Just thank you so much, so much for watching my videos. All right, now, are you ready to see what Lion Brand sent me? All right, <clears throat> here's the box. I'm going to open it up. I'm super excited. 
And I did remember to move my coffee cup so I don't spill my coffee this week. I cannot believe I did that. Ooh, fun stuff in here. All right, let me get these flaps out of the way. Oh, I'm so excited about the first two things I see. Look at this. <laughs> and I got a Cookie Monster one too. Is that not the cutest thing ever? Okay, so what these are is their little kits. I think they're called, oh, One Hat Wonder. I was gonna say something similar to that. And what it is, is you get enough yarn to make a hat and add this to the top. And I have some of these that I've done, but not with the Sesame Street characters. Aren't those cute? There's blue and pink. And I have done um, uh, the Loveys. I've made these into little squares and made a little blanket and added the face to each one. Um, but I haven't done it with the Sesame Street ones. I've also made a little a little beach bag, and I also have a hat pattern out there. It's called the kids, uh, the kids or the children's bobble hat, and it's specifically made for the amount of yarn that you get in one of these, and then to add the topper. Okay, and this one is abracadabra, isn't it? Abracadabra. It's not saying on here. Yes, Abby Cadabby. This is Abby Cadabby. Look at those ponytails. And of course, you know that's Cookie Monster. Is that not the cutest thing? I cannot wait to make something new with these. All right. Oh, this is interesting. It's called Just Hemp. Now, I've not used any of this. It feels a lot like just your basic cotton yarn, like a peaches and cream or something. All right, let's see. The color is called Shell. And it has three and a half ounces, 100% hemp. Hmm. I'm excited to try that. Has anybody tried this? Sustainable stitching. I like that. Made from hemp. You know, a lot of the ropes and uh, uh, that we use, like, um, I use a lot of the thin hemp rope to, like, tie up my, my tomato plants and I also use it like to make the arch for my green beans and stuff like that. So this is really interesting. I'm going to have to try this. I would like to know if anybody's tried that. That's, that's really interesting. Oh, this is beautiful. This is called Sunset Night. Look at this. Okay, I'm going to have to show this to you on this other camera because this is too gorgeous not to show up close. Let's click over here. Let's move this out of the way. There we go. I got stuff sitting around for later on. Look at that. Isn't that, I can't, there we go. It's got sequins in it. It's kind of a purple to a pink to a real soft blush. It's 90% acrylic and 10% polyester. It's a medium four. And the color is called Atacama Desert. Atacama Desert. I've never heard of that desert, so I don't know if that's a specific desert or it's just named that. It's absolutely gorgeous. And there's two of these in there. I see a beautiful wrap in this yarn's future. <laughs> All right, now the last thing I got is really cool. I got two of these. This is called Gopher Faux Dual. And what it is, is it's a chunky yarn and it also has the gopher faux inside. And you can make a pom-pom or a trim. Isn't that cool? Let me put this on this other camera as well so you can see this. Gopher faux. It's a super chunky yarn. Let's see. It's a six. <clears throat> seven ounces. And there's enough here to make like a, a cowl and then trim it with the gopher faux. Or maybe make a hat and trim it with the gopher faux. See the hat she's wearing on the wrapper? Isn't that cool? They sent me two of those, so I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. All right, those are some really fun yarns. I'm, I've got some really neat ideas and projects coming for those. Now, the, the truth is I haven't, I haven't thought of anything yet, but my brain is like going crazy, like, oh, I could do this or I could do that. That's what happens to me when I see new yarn. I come up with all these crazy ideas in my mind that have to be made like right now. Um, I have to tell you, I am really blessed with a really patient husband because I have yarn 
staged in certain parts of the house. <laughs> I have, I have projects. I have this big wicker basket that has projects lined up that are at various stages. I have a bench that sits next to my workstation downstairs in the area where I type everything up. Um, I have yarns and notes on various stages of projects. And he is so patient. He, he never says, are you ever going to pick up this yarn? Or how many projects do you have going? Or do you really need this yarn? He never says that. He is my greatest cheerleader. And not only that, he writes all the music, performs, records all the music for all of my videos. He helps me with all my technical difficulties. Sometimes I'm getting ready to start and something won't work. And I have to call him at work because he's not working at home anymore. He's back to working in the office. And I call him, I'm like, oh no, I don't have sound, or oh no, I can't do this, or oh no, the screen's black. And he just patiently walks me through what I need to do. I am blessed beyond measure with a wonderful husband. <laughs> because I really am a, 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 a crazy, not crazy, silly basket case at times. When Especially when it comes to yarn projects and the technology that is way above my head. <laughs> So he is my biggest cheerleader, my, my favorite team member. <laughs> All righty. So that's what came in in the Lion Brand box. And I'm super excited to make some patterns off of these. Now you can find all of these probably at Joann's. Um, I've never seen, um, the only ones I've seen at Joann's actually is the Sesame Street ones. These other ones I have not seen. So feel free to go to the Lion Brand website and look for those. And also, you can Google to find them. And that's another question that I get about yarn a lot. I'll show a picture, or not a picture, I'll show an, a yarn that's maybe new. I'll show a yarn that I haven't used before. <clears throat> I'm prepared with my lemon water today. And um, I'll get a question, how can I find that yarn? Well, <clears throat> you could always go online and go to the website. Example, here I've got a, a skein of Red Heart with Love. This is a very old skein. They're not even shaped like this anymore. They're more, more like a ball. Oh, I just busted the paper off of there. Anyway, they're more like a ball now. This is an older skein. And um, go online, go to the websites, you know, um, if you're looking for a particular brand, like Lion Brand or Red Heart, Yarn Inspirations, Karen, any of those, go to the website. Um, just Google it, redheart.com or yarninspirations.com or lionbrand.com. Go ahead and just look it up. And then you can search through and every one of them have a little tab that is a search. And it's usually that little magnifying glass and just put in the yarn you're looking for. Now, if it's an older yarn, <clears throat> a couple of places that it's really good to look for your older yarns is Hirschner's, Mary Maxim, and of course you can always look on Amazon or eBay, but you're probably going to pay more on price from Amazon or eBay. I do have a box coming from Mary Maxim that I'm very excited about, and it'll be here in a couple, probably 10 days, so it might be another week before I show you that one. And I've got something fun we're going to do next week um, while we're talking about next week, and then I'll talk about the rest of the questions. N have any of you ever done surface uh, stitching on crochet? Do you know what it is? <laughs> next week, we're going to do a little lesson on how to do surface stitching on your crochet projects. And when surface stitching is used, it's used to maybe write a number or a letter or even embroidery something. And we're going to talk about that next week. So have a coaster or two ready that's plain or just a square swatch that's plain. And we'll do a little bit of that next week because it's really fun to add someone's name maybe to a stocking or uh, stitch a letter or two like, I don't know, 2020 on something <laughs> or something like that. And so you never know what you can do with it and how you can, uh, you know, like make it custom made for someone. <laughs> Especially if it's like a new baby or something, you know. Um, and so we're going to do that next week. So be prepared for that. 
All right, let me switch down here real quick and look, see if there's any quick questions. All righty. So, all righty. Now, what we're going to do now is I'm going to talk to you about some questions that I have gotten recently. And I might have gone over these, you know, a couple years ago or in the past. But, um, yeah. Okay. The first question is, why does my yarn that I just bought brand new have knots and fuzzies and weird spots? <laughs> All right. So, when you get yarn brand new, no matter what the brand is, you may have some weird stuff in it. And what that actually means is, let me grab this real quick. When yarn is made, it's spun, when you're getting it from a big company, it's spun on these great big wheels and spools, and then it's spun, and it cuts off every so often, and if they run out of yarn, they have to tie a knot to put it together. That knot is not intended for you to use. What happens is, what, and you can find this by going online and looking at some of the videos about how yarn is made. And what happens when they have to reattach that yarn, you usually get a couple extra yards in order to give you enough yarn to reattach it properly. And it, the yarn knot that's in the yarn is not intended for you to just stitch over. Now, a lot of people do and have no problem with that, and that's okay, but it's not gonna hold strong. It's not a strong knot. It's just a quick knot to hold it strong enough to get the machines going again to keep going, okay? And so usually you wanna do like that join, that Russian join or some other type join to put that back together. Now, if it has a fuzzy spot, that's just an anomaly in the yarn and you can, you'll have, you can either stitch through it or cut past it. Sometimes there'll be another piece of thread in there that's maybe the wrong color. And that's just oh, like what you would call overspray. It's not really overspray, but it, so when you're in a yarn factory, pieces fly. And for instance, if they cut it to reattach, you might have a little piece. I call those farleys. <laughs> There's just a little piece of something. And it just flew in there, and sometimes it gets wound up in the yarn because as it's put through the spools, it's twisted, you know. And that's just, just a weird thing that happens. The other thing that happens sometimes is in the dyeing process. Acrylic yarn is not dyed the same way that wool yarn is. And, and so sometimes in the dyeing process, you do get like the overspray. And I've seen it more in some of the Karen cakes. And to be honest with you, I kind of think it's cool. But you can cut those out and keep going. The thing about this is it happens in every kind of yarn. It's not just cheap yarn. It's not just expensive yarn. It's not just wool fiber, it's all kinds of fiber. You get weird things. And it has to do with just those machines going fast. They're trying to get the product going. And the other thing that happens a lot of times is your dye lots change. And that's just because it can be off just a fraction and it changes the shade. And that's why it's really important when you get your yarn, I ripped, ripped it off right where I didn't want to, but you'll notice that usually it's by the UPC, there'll be a lot number, and that's the lot number right there, okay? And they, they change shades sometimes. The mix isn't exactly the same. And it's no different than when you dye your hair. I mean, think about it. You buy the same brand of what? I don't dye my hair, so I don't know. Let's see. Uh, my mom used to use Nice and Easy, okay? You buy the same brand of hair dye. It's the same color but it doesn't come out the same color. It's the same sort of thing, all right? And so don't let that frustrate you. It's just the nature of yarn. Uh, uh, the next question I got was, why does my yarn have breaks and cuts? This usually does not happen at the factories or where the yarn is made. It usually happens at the store, okay? I know a lot of you probably don't know this, but at one point when I did work for Walmart, I was a manager of the fabrics and yarn department. What happens a lot of times is two different things. <clears throat> a lot of times the boxes of yarn are opened up with those 
box knives. And they open those up and they cut that yarn. The yarn is usually in bags, sometimes of six, sometimes of three. And they're all together. And when they cut across the top of that box, they're cutting the yarn. And they don't realize it, especially someone who doesn't work with yarn. A lot of the stockings done at night in a lot of these places. And so they don't realize they're doing this. And even though they'll be, because I used to open up yarn boxes and stock the shelves. And a lot of times on the boxes, there'll be a big box knife with that circle and a line through it. They still don't see it. <laughs> and so a lot of times those cuts happen in the stores. If that you come across a skein of yarn and you bought it in the store and you notice later it's got a bunch of cuts in it, take it back to the store. Okay. Another thing that happens is a lot of these stores like um, uh, Joann's and Michael's, they store their yarn in those baskets that have all the metal edges. And I, when I used to work at Walmart also, I noticed this happened a few times. Those edges, the baskets are kind of like this, and they have those edges at the top where it meets on the edge, and those edges are sharp. And you push that yarn through, and it, it'll cut the side of the yarn. It's an accident. Again, if you find some that's cut, take it back to the store that you bought it from. Another thing I wanted to go back to was the yarn with a lot of knots and things. If you come across one that has a bunch of knots and a bunch of mess in it, you can always contact Lion Brand is really good about it. Red Heart used to be, you know, Red Heart's owned by Yarnspirations now. And so I haven't had a lot of dealings with them. But I guarantee you, if you come across yarn that's just a mess like that, they're going to replace that skein. That's that's just customer service. And Red Heart was really good about it. And I'm sure Yarnspirations is the same. Okay, now another question is, why does yarn barf happen? I don't know. <laughs> It just does sometimes. Okay, so what is yarn barf? Yarn barf is when you, okay, usually when you get a skein of, I'm going to take this off because it keeps falling. Usually when you get a skein of yarn, one end will have the center pull and the other end is going to be the outside pull. I don't like to pull from the outside unless I'm using both ends of the yarn at the same time and using two, uh, th uh, th two strands. But sometimes what happens when you're pulling from the center, it's just going to catch and it's going to pull. I'm going to go ahead and do this because I'm going to put this on a cake later. Okay, you're going to pull and you get this whole center piece that comes out. And sometimes it just keeps coming and you get all this mess. It's not any fault of any type of yarn. It doesn't mean your yarn's defective. It doesn't mean it's poor quality. It just means it got caught <laughs> because it's, it's wound on these, you know, uh, on machines and sometimes yarn just just gets caught it's another thing that's just kind of the nature of yarn and it pulls out this big thing if that happens what I do is I take my skein of yarn I fold it in half and I just roll it back on that's all I do and then I'll work through what it is because it's not it's not anything wrong with the yarn it's just something that happens um, the ones that happen to me the most are the ones that are more shaped like a ball um, like uh, the Impeccable from uh, Michaels. It's a great quality yarn, but for some reason when I'm using it, I seem to get more yarn barf than others. It's, it's not anything wrong with the yarn. It's just the, the nature of it. All right, so another question that I get is, in my videos, I always tell you how many ounces that you're going to need. And this woman wrote me this note, that, in, in this email, and she was extremely upset <clears throat> because I always say ounces and I don't say uh, yards. If you look on your yarn, it says the ounces and then it'll say the yards on both of them. I'll switch over here so I can show you this because it's really small. Okay, right here it says seven ounces and then over here it says 370 yards. And the reason I point that out is because almost every skein of yarn I've ever purchased gives you both of those. Okay, and it's, it's just the way I was taught that you go by ounces opposed to yards. If you get a skein of yarn that doesn't have both of them on there, go in your search engine and put how many yards is seven ounces of Red Heart with Love, and it'll tell you. 
okay? So don't, don't let that frustrate you. The truth of the matter is we have so much information at our fingertips that we can find. You can also go to the Red Heart website, which it does redirect you to Yarn Inspirations, but you can go to all the Red Heart products there, okay? <clears throat> That's just the way that I was taught to uh, know the amount. The, when I was when I was really uh, just first learning, you know, I learned from vacation or um, vacation books. I learned from library books. I guess I need a vacation. <laughs> I learned from library books, and the the library books were really old, and I just loved them. Um, I have I have oh, I have one sitting over there that I was recently purchased about a year and a half ago. That's from uh, 1879, I think. And it has, it, it's, it's just amazing. It's all in ounces. There's no yards in it. You know, it's anyway. But anyway, that's something that you can do. Almost every skein of yarn will give you not only the ounces and the yards, but it'll give you the grams and the meters. It's, it's learn to read your labels on your yarn. You're going to get information on how to wash it. You're going to get information on what it is, medium four. You're going to get information on what knitting needle, crochet hook to use, and all kinds of stuff like that. How to walk, I mean, all the information you could ever want to know about a yarn that you're using is going to be on that label. And the reason you're going to do that is because yarn manufacturers want you to use their product. And so they're going to give you as much information as they can to help you so that you'll come back and use their product. All right. Okay. So <clears throat> two more questions. The next question I get all the time is what's the difference between DK yarn and light number three? And there is no difference. DK yarn is a light number three weight yarn. They're the same. They just have two different names. Some people will call it DK. Some people will call it light number three. Okay. The other question is, What's the difference between worsted weight number four yarn and medium weight number four? Again, they're the same. You can, might watch a video and someone will say, use worsted weight red heart yarn. What they're saying is use medium weight number four yarn. It's the same thing. And I'll show you again on here. This says premium worsted weight acrylic. And then on the thing over here, so if that's upside down, it says medium weight number four yarn it's just another way of saying it it's kind of like you know even in america if you live up in northern boston you might call something different than if you live down in the southern tip of california it's just a different way of saying things you know you might call it a couch someone might call it a divan you know it's the same thing we just call it different things so don't let that frustrate you and another thing is, if you don't know, look it up. We Again, we have all the information at our fingertips. All right, and those are the questions that I wanted to answer. I've, I've talked about all this stuff before. I just wanted to talk about it again because it seems like it kind of comes in cycles where I get a whole lot of questions about the same things. Okay, and the other thing I wanted to say is <clears throat> if you're on a video and another pattern designer explain something different than I do, maybe a different way. Don't think they're wrong. Everybody does things differently. I mean, even things as simple as whether a chain one counts as a stitch at the end of the row or it doesn't. And it, it depends on the pattern, of course. And someone may say, you need to chain three and turn, or you need to turn and chain three. Unless the pattern specifically tells you why, it's really the same thing. Because you're going to chain three and then turn, or you're going to go ahead and turn and then chain three. It's really the same thing. Unless there's some specific twist or something that the, that the pattern designer is wanting the thing to look like. All right? And so don't get frustrated with, with other pattern designers, or even with me, if I explain something maybe a little different than what another pattern designer explains. Okay, and there is one more question I wanted to address, and then I'll show you what's new. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good way to say this. One of the things that I have discovered 
you know, and remember, I learned to crochet. I mean, I've been crocheting almost 50 years now. And I, it, it drives me crazy when I have learned <clears throat> the name of a pattern, stitch pattern, and then somebody says, no, 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 so-and-so calls it this. And there have been a lot of people renaming the patterns, and I don't know why, other than they just wanted to give it a fresh name. And it's not wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a little frustrating because <clears throat> um, I have these old pattern books, and I absolutely love them. And they, they're the old, original, traditional names of some of these patterns. And then these new people come along, and they take that pattern. They do it exactly the same, but they rename it. And it's not really wrong. They're pattern stitches. They're for everybody. But it gets a little frustrating. You know what I'm saying? And so don't, don't be like me. Don't let it frustrate you. Because um, another thing you can do is um, look it up. If you see, see something, um, for example, maybe the crocodile stitch. Now, that one I don't think was named anything previously. But um, you can look it up. You can type in. What is the crocodile stitch? Is there another name for this? You know, things like that. Like I said, that information at your fingertips. But don't let that, don't be like me and let that frustrate you because it, it, dri it kind of drives me crazy. <laughs> I try not to let it, but I mean, you know, you know, for years you're calling it this and all of a sudden some new pattern comes out and it calls it something else. That's all. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just different. That's what I always like to say. Because we all think different. We all have different opinions. And so don't worry about it. Don't let it frustrate you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see what's new this week at Posh Pooch Designs. Now you'll see this uh, hooded blanket. I've got it on my roaming camera. Let's see if we can get a closer look. This is the hooded blanket. It's a big roomy blanket. It's perfect for going to like sporting events or camping and you just want to curl up with a big warm blanket. The original one that I made, I actually striped the yarn with three different colors. I think it was uh, gray, white, <coughs> and royal blue. <clears throat> and I love it. <clears throat> Told you earlier, I got a scratchy throat. Anywho, we used to have an uh, RV, and I used to go camping all the time, and I loved it. I would sit in front of the fire. I got a chihuahua on each hip, and we'd just wrap ourselves in it, and I would roast marshmallows. Of course, I didn't get the marshmallows and chocolate, but I would give them the graham crackers. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> but it is a really, really warm blanket. And someone said, well, I don't want to make it because it has holes in it. It's still a really warm blanket, but what you can do if you don't want the holes in the blanket instead of alternating that um, row of the double crochet, chain one double crochet, do it all in double crochet. It'll be super warm still. It'll be extra super warm. But it is really warm even with the holes. My thinking was... <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, I think I got her gone. My thinking was that um, air needs to circulate in order to keep you warm. And, and so I liked having the holes in it, but you don't have to do it that way. And um, it's made with that bulky number six. I've got the, scan, the, the other one right over here. I wanted two of them. <clears throat> it actually takes about one and a half. And it's this Karen Anniversary Cakes. I love it. And I love that yarn. It's super fun, bulky six yarn. I do have what I'm calling a big, funky, chunky poncho that I'm working on with my other skein that's in blues and teals and I'm loving it it's turning out really cool okay another thing that we did this week was the huga we called it the gumdrop cowl because the stitching looks like gumdrops with floofy pom-poms is that not adorable I just love it <clears throat> and if you don't want the pom-poms you can make it without it's super easy, and this yarn is the Red Heart Huga yarn, um, but you don't have to use it. It's a medium five. You can use any medium five, and I, but I love this pattern. I love these colors. I think it turned out beautiful. Another one I'm probably going to keep for myself. <laughs> All right, then yesterday we did a, we did a St. Patrick's Day 
doily. It's super pretty, and you and you have these little shamrocks going all the way around. And it's real important on this one that you do block it. And I've got this one showing you that I'm blocking. Because these are little shamrocks. And if you want to make it into a four-leaf clover, you can just add an extra petal. And this yarn here is that new Wander yarn from Furls. It's absolutely beautiful to work with. <clears throat> it's a soft yarn, like Simply Soft, but it's a little bit thicker. It's a real true medium four. And this is the canary and the meadow. That's what those colors are. It's absolutely gorgeous. It has a sheen to it, and it just slides beautifully on your crochet hook. Now, I, don't, I didn't use a Furls crochet hook because I don't have one. Um, I did have one, but I gave it away because... Um, they're really chunky and my fingers are short and chubby and I just really like a smaller hook and these are the ones I usually use This is a set that I got my husband got it for me at Hobby Lobby. I don't, I don't know the brand Let me see if I, I don't have the paper up there, but anyway <clears throat> It's just a Hobby Lobby brand probably yarn B um, Or something like that and it has a set of like eight I think and I love these are my favorite crochet hooks. I also like the clover hooks so anyway, that's what we did this week. It looks like our time is up. It's been over 30 minutes. I hope you learned some things and had some fun. And don't forget, next week we're going to learn about surface stitching on crochet. All righty, so I'll see you next week. Have a fantastic week. <laughs>